God, after we die. children to spy and steal for your order to educate them give me a child until you're seven and i will give you the man or woman what use are letters when a child can only write his name in pig shit or wisdom in a woman when she cannot wield it beyond her heart <laughs> I taught little Alwyn so much more. Saved her from a life less worthy. She will find enlightenment in the Order, just as I did. If I could save them all, I would. But you cannot. You have corrupted too many to save too few. Order is the only way forward. It can quench our thirst for knowledge. If only Alfred's slave faith is defeated. And what would you sacrifice for infinite knowledge? An immeasurable gift. Why refuse it? Not their innocence. A pity. Non requiescent in Bachi.
Justice, where justice hides when she's tired. Hides? Splood, no. This is a wake, my friend. A celebration to ease the quill on her way to eternal damnation. You heard. Hilda's were not the only eyes in Winchester. My spies tell me stories of an avenging angel striking down the unworthy. I've been called worse. Be thou hail, Eldorbana. That's life destroyer in our dialect. I sat easy with my kinspain, old honey waves alive in my horn, and my eyes on the door, expecting my death, yet unafraid. <laughs> You're quite safe with me, Dane. For now. If the mead is fresh and the air is cool, you may often find a friend even amongst your enemies. I could use someone like you in my settlement, with ink on his fingers and a sense of honor. I would love to devote myself to the study and practice of the law. There is a weariness in war I wish I could shake off. Impossible. Even in death our battles will rage on. It is the way of things. I must thank you before the ale dulls me. By cutting the order down to size, you have given England a hope of unity. It must be a sour apple to swallow, knowing that you are the last of Winchester's enemies. Where is your king now? Alfred is busy with the Elderman of Wessex. A Witten was lately called to discuss the little matter of a bishop's timely death. Are you sure the Sikhs is dead? The bishop is dead, that's certain. And if the bishop was the Sikhs, the Sikhs is dead. A transitive property of mortality, you see. I do not believe it. Too much stared in Winchester. Overwrought prayers and wailing women. Well, you could pay your respects and see for yourself. The funeral is today. If he rots, I will leave with my silver. But if he lives, there's work to be done. Watch your step, Eivor. He'll be a hefty corpse in death. Alive, he'd be much bigger. Whether you find or make a corpse, meet me at the Witten with your report. should be the proof. Such a grisly fate. Did you know Aelfurth? By reputation, I did. He was no friend of Alfred's. I once heard them quarreling at a Witten. A sad day for Winchester. Maybe now God will reward us with a man who truly believes in him. Stranger comes to Wember. You do not mourn like they do. Wember is always here, helping the sleeping, singing to them, so they are not frightened before they meet God. The sleeping? You mean the dead? Wember helps the monks. Dig, dig, dig. You dig the graves. Did you bury Aelfirth? Have you seen Layoff? My poor friend. Poor. Poor Layoff. Layoff? What happened to him? Sleeping. Sleeping like my dog when I hooked him too hard. Someone heard Layoff? Yes. Yes. And while he slept, they stole his face. Did you know Bishop Elfer? No, but I plan to write an epic poem of his grisly demise. Oh, poor Aelfeth, scorched of face. All your woeful companions, bold, bionid, 
weeping, weeping as you are uh, sleeping. Oh, yeah, perfect, yes. I'm sorry for your loss. Makes no odds to me. But I'm sorry for Harriet. She cared so much for him. More than a sister should. Did you know Bishop Aylforth? Barely. But can you still smell the burned flesh? It's rife across the whole graveyard. Only his head and neck are burned. Is this what Wemper meant? That they stole his friend's face? And this corpse's build is slight, frail. Goodwin said Aylforth was a brute. Do you not see? I am in prayer. May we speak of your brother's death? Have you no shame? Leave me. I know the burden you bear. Such a weight of sin you have taken on. And all for your brother's sake. I know he lives. No, he's... He said it was for the good of all. He... I am his loyal sister, and I tell you, he is dead. You hear me? Dead. Leave me alone. I cannot betray my brother. Guard, protect me. Play off, you man. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Why will you not leave me alone? Enough of this, cat and mouse. Where is your brother, the one they call the Sikhs? He is a ghost now. But he will make himself flesh once more of the Witten. And Alfred will be king no more. He means to kill Alfred. Regicide? No. The king will step aside and Aelforth will lead us all, risen and resplendent as the Lord. You are a damned fool. See you, old friend. Can't. Need to get on the other side. In the past, Anglo-Saxon the Sikhs must be hiding in the crowd, biding his time to strike at Alfred. Priest, clerk, or abbot can turn the letter of their sermons from Latin to English. And how can we understand books' words if they are not spoken in our tongue? Aelferth is dead, and we mourn him. But the foul deeds of the unrighteous are sown among our holy deeds like cockles and tear in a field of wheat. Education, wisdom, enlightened thought. <laughs> this will above the sins of our fathers. These I will demand of the next Bishop of Winchester. And so we meet to discuss all worthy candidates and choose the man who will shepherd our flock. The king is mine! By God, it's true. The bishop lives. 
Stand down. That could win. Might as well. Just kill us all! God save us! Why do you defend this tarnished crown? Enough, you scheming cur! Enough, you scheming cur! Sweet is the shepherd's pipe when he calls his lambs to slaughter. I was born to Christians in the northern wilds. My mother would cradle me beneath the stars and whisper, dove-like, God watches over you. Then your people came. And God fixed his stout eye as they slit her throat for a copper ring. No stars threw down their spears as barbarians smeared her blood through fields of broken wheat. God watched all. And I hated him. It may be Alfred's God was testing you. A trial you failed. Alfred's God is weak. Yet he would chain us all in his service from our first breath to our death rattle. My order wishes to break these mind-forged manacles. I am the wolf in Lamb's wool. He takes on the role of a god himself. A worthy path to walk. A wolf is but a walking feast for ravens. One more gift for you, Dane. A deadly truth, if you can find it. With my death, the Order will not die. It will only transform into something far worse for all of us. Elfirth will not cheat Loki's dread daughter twice. I owe you my life. An irony not lost on me, Alfred. My king, we'll go by back streets to the Old Minster. Eivor may find us there when all has settled. Elfirth, my love! No! Curse you, Dane. My brother served God. He wrapped himself in a death cloak to murder your king. Shouldn't you rejoice at the death of a king? You are a heathen and a devil. We both have more questions than answers. But if you know this key, perhaps we can help one another. Where is its home? You treated me with kindness. But this damned order, their machinations killed my brother, so the rest may rot. Take this key to the ruins beneath the bishop's house. You may find answers there.
What do you see? Elfer's sister spoke true. I will find answers in the ruins. Secrets. I will send this to Hytham. He may make some sense of it. Nothing here of the order. I should see Alfred for my reward. Must be blocked from the other side. Come forth, Eivor. Here is far enough. When wrongdoers came to devour my flesh, these enemies stumbled and fell. Have the laws of hospitality been thrown out, Alfred? I did exactly as we agreed. That you did. But do not mistake necessity for friendship. You are a man of your word, a man of God. Indeed. By his example, I live my life. Goodwin.
Here is the only silver fit for one of your dragon boats. A reminder of Christ's sacrifice and our charity. This too I offer you. Live here among us in peace as a Christian, or die a pagan in a blood-soaked field. All you have to lose is life everlasting. And if I choose neither, he offers you hope, Eivor. A life of purpose, above and beyond this one. You'd be a fool to refuse. Your reign will end, King of the West Saxons. Raven wings will beat until your throne crumbles to dust. You were wrong, Goodwin. This one is beyond a saving. your chance, damn you! I did not want it. you on your approach how must it feel not to carry the weight of years i am not a child yet i see in you a child's blissful ignorance of the world's darkest truths a fool you gathered all this from a glance in this way i am wise perhaps you will learn better through flighting i will challenge you i accept and I will place a wager on it. Here's my bet. You may begin. You are savage, uncouth, and care little for life. Like the rest of your kind, you breed misery and strife. Both your hands bear the blood of 1,000 dead men. One thousands of pittance, it's closer to ten. Huh. Not the worst. It's a shame you're so calloused by warfare and pain that you'll joke about death and treat life with disdain. Is it worth it? The killing, the torture, the slaves. Yes, I am ridding the world of cowards, weaklings, and knaves. It pains my ears. Yes, your avarice means that you'll just never see that this war will not grant immortality. You have one life to live, so why throw it away? You're naive if you think that there is any other way. Really? Terrible work. You are likely better at killing than flighting. I will keep your money. Come back when you've learned to speak. I watched you on your approach. 
How must it feel not to carry the weight of years? So sad to... I will. Here's... You are so... Well, perhaps they should have known not to challenge me then. A crude response. I am dismayed. It's a shame, is it? It is not mine to judge, only fill up the graves. <sighs> that was fine. Yes, your av- You have won- To ensure that I'll sit in Valhalla one day. Enough! I've heard more than my fill of your cruelty. Take your winnings. May spending them bring you fleeting joy. I promise it will. No, no, use that stone, Eivor. Use the large one, there. Do you like the snow, Sigurd? I suppose. I... I accept it. I love it. I wish it could gather under my skin, surround my bones, and cloak me in silence, just the way it quiets the land. Snow like arrows? The scald in you speaks. I admit it does calm me down some. If everyone sat and watched the soft, chunky snowfall and said nothing, nothing at all, we would all be happier. Snow makes for a poor plowing bed. That's what I know. You pace about like a dog afraid of a beating. What troubles you? Oh, stranger. Here's a tale. I love Everland, a hunter's daughter. But the hunter's a fearsome fellow. Set me a task, he did. There's an arrow stuck in that tree above that the hunter once fired there. Before any man can have Everland, they need to climb up and get it. Many suitors have tried. All failed. Looks like child's play to me. Maybe I can help. Oh, you do mean to help me. God bless you. the arrow. Proof of your boundless courage. Oh, thank you, stranger. I'll name our firstborn in your honor. Swear I will. Uh, what is your name? Eivor. Eivor, eh? Huh. Well, maybe just something that rhymes with it, then. Would that do? I found the other suitors. A lynx had made its lair up there. A hunter like Etherlin's father would have known that. Oh, uh, surely an innocent mistake. But I must bring him the arrow. He'll be so pleased someone's got it at last. I found a letter from Etherland. Seems she didn't think much of you. You were far from her first choice. Oh, I know. She's made no secret of that. 
But now they're dead, and I'm not. So tra-la-la. I am sure her father will be thrilled. I cleared Winchester of the order, yet to do so meant working with King Alfred. Your poor fellow soldier led you to the King of Wessex? How very strange. He, or she, is toying with you, it seems. I have to go. Then go in peace. Good day. The order in Winchester has been wiped out, but we are no longer welcome there. My contact was none other than King Alfred himself. The order wanted him dead, so... He thought back. Alfred, the line between friend and enemy is a porous one. I want to see the Alliance map. I have received a unique summons from Snottinghamshire in the north. From your old friend, Vili. Vili? A name I've not heard in ten winters or more. How is he? Well, it seems. Vili asks that you join him in feast and celebration, in honor of his father, Heminger Jarl. A welcome invitation. It will be good to see him again. It is worth recalling that his father, Heminger Jarl, would be a formidable ally. Will you go? I will leave for Snottinghamshire today. Good. They will be pleased. Ah, I was just thinking about you. What about we spend a bit of time? Just you and me. I like how you think. Come over here.
Show me. Your head does not ache like mine. What a night. But we should leave for Frankfurt soon. Sunin, guide me.
controls!
Here, I've brought what you asked for. Very good. Let me get to work. I will have the elixir ready shortly. There we have it. One elixir of miraculous wealth. Enjoy. as well. Ended up here, but could not get out. I should return to the alchemist, see if he knows what happened. Asked about this lamp, my friend. Alchemist, what happened to me after I drank that piss? How should I know? I told you, I cannot explain how it works. What I can say is the elixir hit you particularly hard. You stumbled out of here, then began sprinting across this forest as if you had a nose for something. Very feral. I was worried, but I'm glad to see you are all right. Your wealth has swelled, has it not? In a manner of speaking... I awoke in a cave beside a dead man clutching some treasure. Hmm. I've not heard that outcome before. One of your customers in the same pursuit, I think. Only he was not so lucky. Perhaps I should shelve this elixir for the time being. At least until I can better understand its effects. Good thinking. <laughs> 